video we're going to talk about function notation and graphs. So we have the graph of a function. It starts at 0, 0, increases to about 2.5 comma, let's say 3.8. I'm going to mark that on the graph here. It decreases from there, it hits a minimum at about 4.25 comma 2.4. And then it increases. It's a smooth curve, doesn't double back or anything like that. There are three values marked on the graph with A, B, and C. On the x-axis, we have an A marking at about 0.7. We have a B marking at about 2.75. And then on the Y axis, we have a C marking at about 3.5. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is find F of A. This means that the input is A and I'm asking for the output. So this is a good time to remember that the inputs are always on the horizontal axis and the outputs are always on the vertical axis. Also that when we write function notation, something like f of something equals something, the input is the part in the first parentheses, f of the input equals the output. So when we're asked to find f of a, we're saying when the input is a, what's the output of the graph f? In order to find f of a, I'm going to use A as the input, go up to the graph, and then go over to the vertical axis to see what the output is. Let me draw that on the screen. Starting at A, I'm going to draw a vertical line up to the graph and then over to the Y axis. And you will see in this case, the value is 2. So F of A is 2. f of b will do the same thing. We'll start at b, we'll take a vertical line up to the graph, and then over to the x-axis. And we can see that f of b is 3.5, which is also c. So either of those work as an answer. Now we'll do this in reverse. So I'm going to erase those two lines so they don't confuse us. And now we're being asked f of x equals 2, where x equals what? So now the output is 2, and the question is what is the input? So if the output is 2, I'm going to start at 2 on the y-axis and move over till I hit that graph of f, and then take that down to the x-axis. You'll see that we actually get back to that value of a, or 0.7. So f of x equals 2, where x equals 0.7 or a. Next one, f of x equals c, where x equals what? So again, let's start at the output value of c, that was at 3.5, and we'll take that over to the graph, and notice that it actually hits the graph twice. It hits the graph at about 0.4, and it hits the graph again at the value of b, or 2.75. So there's actually two answers here. We could say f of x equals c, where x equals 0 0.4, or 2.75. Next, we're going to practice a little bit with inequalities. So f of x is greater than or equal to 3.5 on the interval what? So we're looking at the output. When is the output greater than or equal to 3.5? How do I know it's the output? Because it's the entire expression f of x. It's not x is greater than 3.5, it's f of x is greater than or equal to 3.5. I'm going to start at 3.5 on the graph and draw a line going across. That's the line at c. And what I really want is where is the function greater than this? So the function is greater than this. I'm going to highlight it on the screen. It's greater than 3.5 between 0.4 
and 2.75. If I take those values down, these are the same values we used to answer um, the previous question. So the interval is when x is between 0 0.4 and 2.75. We write that as 0.4 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 2.75. You can call this a between expression. It's one where the x is between two values. Okay, the next one we reverse and we say when x is between 0 and 2, then f of x is between what? So let's go back to our graph and let me do some erasing here so it's a little clearer to see. When x is between 0 and 2, let's draw that. x is between 0 and 2, so there's 2 and there's 0, going with vertical lines up. Then the y values, the output values, are between what? We can see that the lowest output value is 0 and the highest output value is about 3.8. So f of x is between 0 and 3.8. We fill in the expression so that it reads 0 is less than or equal to f of x is less than or equal to 3.8. How about when f of x is between 0 and 2.1? Again, let me go back to my graph and do a little bit of erasing. When f of x is between 0 and 2.1, that's when the output values are between 0 and 2.1 we have x values that are between 0 and about 0 0.7. That's correlating directly down to the x-axis. The x values run between 0 and about 0.7. Now, b minus a. If we just look at our graph, b and a are just values on the x-axis. So that would be 2.75 minus 0 0.7 and that's going to give us 2.05 as an answer. f of b minus f of a, those are the output values. We actually wrote those in the first two problems. So f of b was 3.5 and f of a was 2. So we are going to do 3.5 minus 2, which is 1.5. So Number eight was the difference in x values, b minus a. Number nine was the difference in output values, 3.5 minus 2. Now what if you have f of b minus a, where b minus a is in the parentheses? Well, we usually do parentheses first, if there is an expression that's evaluatable in the parentheses. So here I'm going to say, well, b minus a is the same thing as 2.05. So really what I'm doing when I want to find f of b minus a is finding f of 2.05. Remember 2.05 is the input and f of 2.05 is the output. So let's look on the graph for an input of 2.05. That's about here. The output looks like it is somewhere in the neighborhood of 3. Point, a little over 3.75, so let's say 3.8. All right, that was a lot of work, and these problems can be really confusing when you first learn them. So what I'm going to suggest is that you reprint this worksheet and do the entire thing on your own without looking at your previous version and then double check it against your notes or rewatch the video if you're still struggling with the concepts. But one of the most important recaps to have here is that the x-axis, the horizontal axis, is the input values, and the input values are what's inside the f of x part, the f of something. The y-axis or the vertical axis are the output values, and that is the result of the input values. We look at where these two things correlate on the graph, and the graph is essentially a map between the inputs and the outputs.